Hello and welcome to this YouTube webinar on mining structured data and unstructured data together uh, using Oracle Advanced Analytics. My name is Charlie Berger. I'm the Senior Director of Product Management for Oracle Data Mining and Advanced Analytics. And today I'm going to do this webinar and try to show you how we can mine both structured and unstructured data, something that a lot of other players uh, have difficulty doing. They either do one or the other. And what we're going to show today is how we leverage the strengths of the database, including some really cool features of the database called Oracle Text, and then, of course, the Oracle Advanced Analytics option, and together how these combine and allow you to do some pretty cool things like mine structured data and unstructured data together. So at Oracle, we have a number of lawyers, and we're always required to show this safe harbor statement that says, if I ever mention or imply anything that could be uh, taken as maybe futures to disregard that. This is only talking about released product here, so we'll continue on. So on the topic of sort of predictive analytics 101, I think everyone talks about this a lot these days. The idea is that there's data, data everywhere. It's huge growth of, uh, there's huge growths of data. Um, data is growing exponentially, and there's always this challenge of there's more data than there are data analysts who are able to uh, deal with this data and mine it. And also, uh, there's not enough good tools out there to deal with this. So this produces this sort of uh, useful data gap, is what some people call it. Um, executives who feel they understand the impact of their data, uh, the impact their data will have on their organizations, it, uh, it, it's like 12%. So that means that about 88% of the data is just not you know, really felt that it's being used. And a lot of that data uh, that they're complaining about is sometimes called dark data, sometimes called unstructured data, data that's not easily ingested and uh, put to good use, put to, good, put to work. So if you're going to be a vendor like Oracle and claim to have an uh, advanced analytics platform to help with this type of problem, the data analysis platform ought to be extremely powerful and be able to handle large volumes of data. It ought to be pretty easy to learn and it ought to be able to be quite automated and most importantly um, to support and enable deployment because that's what it's all about. You want to take your predictive models that you've uh, built, uh, whether they include just structured data or structured and unstructured data, as we'll talk about further on uh, today, and you want to deploy that in, uh, throughout the enterprise, maybe within an application. So now it's a predictive application with recommendations or suggestions, perhaps based on the customer's uh, customer comments, uh, Twitter feeds, uh, emails, uh, PowerPoints, PDFs, all the unstructured data that you never thought you could mine before. I want to show you how easily it is, uh, how easy it is for you to add that uh, to your analysis. So what we're going to be talking today is uh, mostly about Oracle's uh, advanced analytics offerings. Uh, we have offerings that uh, add parallel implementations of uh, machine learning algorithms that people use for clustering, classifications, anomaly detection, uh, market basket analysis, and so on. These are parallel scalable data mining algorithms that are implemented in a database fashion. We also have, that's called Oracle Advanced Analytics. The components of that are sometimes known as Oracle Data Mining, that's the SQL API, Oracle R Enterprise, which is uh, the integration with open source R, which maps to those same in-database SQL functions, and also the Oracle Data Miner GUI, which is what we're going to be showing and working with for most of today's session. There's also uh, algorithms that we offer. There are also algorithms that we offer on the Hadoop platform, and that's called the Oracle R Advanced Analytics for Hadoop offering, and that's part of the big data connectors. So we offer these high-performance, parallelized implementations of algorithms both in the Oracle database and in the Hadoop platform, all on the premise of don't move the data. Data is big. Move the algorithms to where the data is. And so our offerings support data analysts, data scientists, and developers. We have drag and drop workflow GUIs. That's the Oracle data miner. You can also use R Studio and through the integration with R, use your R scripts that get pushed down to SQL and point to the same data mining functions and statistical functions we have inside the database. By doing this, it extends the database, it extends the Hadoop platform into a powerful analytical platform. And what's really cool or important about that is that it really uh, enables the enterprise to build and deploy predictive analytics applications. So really take all this data and take it beyond the data, uh, the desktop of a data scientist and deploy it throughout the organization. But we want to talk a little bit more about how we deal with unstructured data. So I want to get a little, give a little bit of the history and the evolution of the product so to give a little bit of context for that. So this effort started way back in 1999 when Oracle 
Apple acquired a company called Thinking Machines Corporation. And that company, uh, which, which I came from, and a number of us uh, who are still with Oracle today, uh, all came from, um, we had a number of algorithms that ran outside of the database, but we said, we're at Oracle, we need to figure out ways to re-implement these machine learning algorithms inside a database uh, architecture. So something that would leverage the strengths of the database. So that's what, uh, that's what the development organization did. And in doing so, we leveraged the strengths of the database. So counting, aggregations, uh, parallelization within the uh, database uh, structure. And when it comes time to doing things like dealing with unstructured data, where there's a lot of capabilities in the database, namely uh, a feature called Oracle Text, which deals with unstructured data. It can deal with uh, what's called clobs and blobs, character large objects and binary large objects inside the database. And so we use Oracle Text to pre-process the data and feed it to the data mining algorithms so they can ingest that unstructured data in a fashion similar to how we uh, uh, ingest the structured data. So this whole evolution has been going on for some period of time. And now in 2016, uh, coming out with release 12.2, it's a very, very uh, high performance uh, analytical database that can mine structured data, unstructured data, transactional data, uh, geospatial data can do all those things inside the database. And our main value proposition is that the data remains in the data management platform. You can um, have all of your model building and all of your model scoring occur inside the database. It leverages your investment in the Oracle IT uh, infrastructure and mo most importantly of all, it allows you to deliver enterprise-wide applications. So for most customers, uh, their customer reference stories are what used to take weeks, perhaps using you know, competitive statistical or data mining uh, analytical platforms that are you know, required you to move the data to a separate analytical platform. With the Oracle Advanced Analytics Platform, they can do it uh, inside the Oracle database in minutes, uh, seconds, uh, at most maybe hours. So in total, what we have then is an architecture that just extends the database. Uh, we also have algorithms that run in Hadoop, uh, the Oracle uh, R Advanced Analytics for Hadoop offering. So today we're mostly gonna be talking about the Advanced Analytics database option and how it is able to use Oracle text and handle the unstructured data. So you have information producers, uh, whether or not they're using R or uh, what I'm gonna show mostly today, the SQL developer extension called Oracle Data Miner, uh, which then talks to uh, SQL, uh, the workflow then talks to the SQL functions inside the database, which can handle the structured and the unstructured data. And then once you've built the predictive models, the results, the models, they're all still, where are they? They're in the database. So the information consumers, uh, whether that's their OBIEE or Oracle Business Intelligence Cloud Service or any kind of application, they can all, any SQL literate application or tool can then talk to those results and talk to those models because they're just still inside the Oracle database. And that can be on the cloud or that can be on premise. Oracle offers it, you know, sort of all different flavors these days. So unstructured data. Unstructured data is growing at a, you know, all the data is growing at a huge data growth. And you'll see many, many different uh, studies on this uh, growing at 42.5% per year on the unstructured data, 22% per year over here. I think those numbers are probably all you know, underestimated what, what's really happening out there. But you know, how, regardless of uh, who you believe and what study you look at, um, the numbers are exploding and the majority of that data is, is in fact unstructured data. Uh, and that comes in all sorts of different forms. So there's other studies that go off and I've referenced these at the bottom. There's other studies that say 80% of this business relevant information originates in unstructured form, uh, primarily text. So for most and I guess I should say for many, if not most, data mining uh, and predictive analytics tools and platforms, they're not really that good at dealing with unstructured data. It's sort of like they have a special tool that, that does just unstructured data, maybe just deals with uh, maybe trying to solve sentiment analysis or do search, text search, those kind of things. Well, by moving the algorithms inside the Oracle database and leveraging all the other strengths of the database, namely things like Oracle Text, which has a large amount of search and um, text indexing and support for multiple languages and stemming and leafing and all of that. Uh, we just sit on top of that and we leverage uh, the strengths of the database. Uh, so our in database algorithms can uh, ingest the structured, the unstructured data and keep right on going. And if you combine the, the structured and the unstructured data in general, your models should get better. Uh, the, the, the examples that I've seen show 15 or 20% model improvement. 
uh, if you can add in the relevant unstructured data. So what is this type of data, the unstructured data? Well, that's missing from most predictive models. It's your customer comments, you know, like, hey, I just bought the product. Or if you go to a restaurant, they say, well, how was your dinner, sir? Usually you're going to say, well, the dinner's just fine. But you might go back on to OpenTable or Yelp and you might say, well, the waiter was pushy, my steak was undercooked, and the uh, dessert was uh, bland. So overcooked, uh, pushy waiter, uh, bland, all of those are words that I can use to mine if I'm going to try and build a more uh, accurate, better predictive model uh, understanding my customers. Emails. Emails come back and forth between companies constantly. Why aren't we mining more and more uh, emails? Customer service reps about uh, this customer uh, called and said his payment was late for the fifth time in the last five months. Any kind of PowerPoint, uh, PDF, Word documents, these are physician and nurse abstracts. These are all the types of things that are fair game because they are managed inside the Oracle database. Oracle text knows how to parse that out and give us a a count of words, what we sometimes call a bag of words. So we're really talking about free form written information that describes more about a situation. For example, a customer's interest in discount and sale and items than any kind of structured data could possibly uh, communicate. So uh, there's various different studies that I've referenced here that says, will your ability to manage um, unstructured content impact your ability to serve customers? In other words, will this unstructured data help? And in fact, Yes, 85% of it, and, and you could say that in a very unstructured way, absolutely, you bet unstructured data can help. So uh, that whole uh, statement is really probably more rich in meaning, absolutely help and so on. Those are just uh, words that uh, we can ingest in, uh, in our data mining process. So let's continue on. So the way we do this, as I've uh, alluded to a few different times, we use Oracle Text. It's a native capability of every Oracle database. So if you go to Oracle Text or you go, I go to Oracle Database, you go to Oracle Text, or you go on the internet and you search for Oracle Text, you'll see how it uses standard SQL to index, search, and analyze text and documents that are stored in the Oracle Database in files or on the web. So those files are typically stored as character large objects, clobs, or binary large objects, blobs. Oracle Text supports multiple languages. I think it's something like 25 or 30 languages. You can, you can check it out on the internet or in the documentation. It uses advanced uh, relevant ranking technology to improve uh, search quality, but we use it to take, uh, as you show in the example, uh, as I show in the example below, to tokenize the unstructured data. So you see the unstructured data. Shopping at your store is a hassle. I rarely shop there and usually forget to bring your new loyalty card and hence never get the items at the sale price. Can a store manager look up my account online? There might be typos in there that, you know, and what does that sentence even really mean? I don't know. Is that a positive or a negative sentence? Well, I'm not sure how to interpret that, but from a machine learning point of view, what we're really going to do is we're going to say, well, let's take all the words shopping at your store, hassle. We're going to count each of these different words. We're going to throw out the what we call stop words like uh and up and my and some of these different is hassle. I mean, is a all the stop words, the short sort of meaningless words and, and Oracle text comes with a stop words list that's just going to sort of white out those words uh, and it's going to feed us the more. Uh, relevant words, at least what it thinks are more relevant words, and a count of those words. So if you say the word discount, for example, five times more often than the larger population in total says the word discount, that's going to be for us a, a coefficient on the word discount that's going to be 5x what everyone else is. So that's analogous to being five times taller, five times richer, five times uh, 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 more frequent visits, whatever it is uh, showing the relative strength of that uh, token or that ver that word compared to the rest of the population, and that has meaning. So we're going to use that. So all of our algorithms, and you see the list of, of the algorithms here that are in database data mining algorithms that are accessible via the native SQL functions, native uh, uh, access via the R integration, and also accessible via the Oracle Data Miner GUI. All of these algorithms can, because they're in database implementations, they can analyze. Structured data, of course, but they can also ingest unstructured data. So I, I'm doing this webinar because sometimes this point is somewhat uh, lost on people. And down here, you just see this little sort of footnote at the bottom that says text mining. Oh, by the way, all of these algorithms, if you have clustering algorithms or uh, decision trees even or support vector machines, uh, all of these algorithms can mine core structured data, but they can also mine unstructured data and, in fact, transactional data like market basket analysis data. And I'm going to show a little bit of that, but most of the focus is going to be on the uh, 
unstructured data today. So we can do all that uh, very easily because of our in-database implementations, leveraging all the strengths of the database. And we're going to show you how we uh, can really think of this. You can think of Oracle Advanced Analytics as, as really extending traditional SQL that says, select all customers uh, where I aggregate their purchases of shoes is greater than this. Um, well, I can, I can add that and where I predict they will buy more shoes or where they're where they were uh, will likely uh, uh, churn or likely voluntarily uh, leave the corporation or or uh, associate market basket analysis. These are all um, just very powerful SQL verbs that if you go to the SQL reference uh, uh, documentation, you'll see the data mining uh, analytical um, SQL functions as well added to that. So that's what we're really talking about. We've extended the language of SQL to add in a very powerful analytical SQL verbs. Uh, sort of machine learning verbs, if you will. And so here's a, a graphical, I'll go to the live thing, but this sort of communicates what we're talking about today. We're taking, first of all, transactional data. Uh, this is, in a sense, unstructured data too, right? It's semi-structured. It's data that comes in, how many uh, purchases did you make of uh, beer, of diapers, of soda, of butter, and milk, and so on. I'm going to aggregate those all up to say the average amount of beer, diapers, soda, milk, or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to bring that in as a as a nested table, if you will, that says for each customer, what were the items they purchased? And I can either take the max or the min or the median or, or whatever. Here, I'll probably take the sum, right? I'll probably take the sum there, which is what I do. Um, over here, I have unstructured data. Now, I'm calling this out separately. You don't have to do this. This is sort of the old way of doing it, but I call it out separately just to highlight what's going on here. We're going to take the unstructured data, the customer demographics and comments, we're going to develop a, a text uh, index here. So we're going to tokenize that data and get a, give a uh, what's called a term frequency inverse document frequency uh, coefficient for each term relative to the larger corporate uh, larger population. Here, just for just because it's cool and interesting, I'm nesting in a predictive model. So I might buy a FICO score from someone else, but I might say, well, you know, I have enough data here on my way through this analysis. I will make my own prediction of what the person's credit score rating is. By the time I get to here, I've joined together this uh, semi-structured data that I've totaled all up the sums of purchases. I've added in this other customer data where I've added another prediction on the fly. I've taken this additional customer demographic data, including all the free, free text, free form customer comments like the one I showed before. I do an index of that. I join them all together. So by the time I get to this 360 degree view of the customer, I've got a very complex um, nested table of a row for each customer, but but when I get to things like comments or purchases, it's a nested table that shows me the tokenized words and their coefficients or the purchases and the amounts of those purchases. So when I then go to build my models, because they're the in database implementations of these machine, machine learning algorithms, I can uh, apply many different models uh, to the data, support vector machines, naive phase, but, decision trees, clustering, whatever I want to do, but I'm going to consider the demographics, the past purchases, the comments, tweets, anything they have in here, um, because they can, because they've been taught how to, uh, to know about structured data, unstructured data, transactional data, and if I had a geospatial data. At the end of it, I'm going to have my scored list of customers, the most likely customers to respond. I think in this case, we're trying to predict who's going to buy uh, an affinity card, who's going to hyper respond to an affinity card, something like that. Um, and I can also generate the SQL scripts, or I can just automate this through the workflow API. So it's just like you'd see from any other statistical or data mining vendor with a workflow type of approach. But what I want to point out is this ability to, to, to mine the unstructured data, and in fact, the semi-structured data up here as well. That's, that's a little bit different from what you'll see from other players. And of course, or interestingly, this all runs exactly the same, whether or not you're running it on-premise, uh, or up in the cloud, in the Oracle cloud. The, uh, in either case, your, your database is intelligent enough to mine structured and unstructured data, and it's the same code regardless of where you have it. Uh, and getting even a little bit better here, I think, we have something called Big Data SQL. Now, Big Data SQL extends the reach of SQL down to the Hadoop platform. So a lot of times people may keep their tweets or their customer comments or documents or who knows what, in JSON data types, uh, it might be Hive data, it might be uh, social media data, a bunch of different types of data over here that I want to query, filter, aggregate, 
uh, and join that data, maybe just all tweets that have anything to, uh, so, so all tweets that have some relevance to shoes or hamburgers or, or this particular restaurant or whatever, I can go filter that. I can join that data to the other data over here, and then any kind of data scientist can use the uh, SQL um, client, the Oracle Data Miner GUI, or the R client to access and data mine that data. And if you believe all of this, that 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 better data and more data of the right type is 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 a good thing, then you would say that, well, if I had a model with 20 variables, I could probably build a pretty good model. But if I figured out the right variables, because I've, I've got the right customer comments, the right emails, the right PowerPoints, the right uh, purchases, uh, a model with more variables, I should get a better model. If I add even more variables, I should get a better model. And if I look at the land of uh, big data, with uh, spatial location data, web visits, sensor data, unstructured data of any kind, text, comments, physician's notes, nursing notes, whatever, customer service, repairman notes, whatever. All of those things, theoretically, if it's the right kind of data, should give me even better models. And if I think about deriving um, new variables out of that data in an intelligent fashion, like what's the ratio of the amount of dropped calls you've had per uh, month recently versus in the past, or if I look at your uh, uh, checks written uh, in the past versus today, all these kind of derived or engineered features, um, I can think about the data in the database, use my domain knowledge to, to build even smarter and better variables, or what we call engineered features, and theoretically build even better models. So that's what it's all about. It's leveraging the strengths of your data management platform um, including all this unstructured data to build better models. So I'm going to now delve into a quick demo. I'm going to do that using the Oracle Data Miner graphical user interface, this workflow sort of GUI here. It is part of the SQL developer uh, uh, offering. It's something that uh, people download from uh, OTN uh, always. Uh, there's millions of these that uh, get downloaded every year. And the Oracle Data Miner is just an extension to that. So at this point, uh, I'm going to show how I can use this one-click uh, data mining here, where I just simply say, well, I have some data, and I have some uh, text data, like uh, customer comments here. It's a clob data type. I'm just going to set it to text, and off it goes. And I'll show you how that works out uh, in the detail. The uh, problem statement, that we're, uh, the business use case that we're going to try and uh, walk through here, is the idea of trying to figure out who is going to be a likely best loyalty card responder and what are their profiles. So I have these loyalty cards. Maybe I've set up a scenario where I've randomly given them out to 5% of my population and then gives away maybe a 10% discount. Now, I don't want to give those cards away to 100% of my population because if I do, my revenues will go down by 10%, right? 10% discount, 100% of the population, it's not a good thing. So maybe it's like a frequent flyer, special loyalty card kind of thing that I want to uh, hand out judiciously just to people who I believe that if I hand them this card, they'll spend 11% or more. They'll, they'll use it to buy gifts for their friends and family. They'll do bulk purchases for their neighbors. They'll really sort of go to town on this thing. So I want to also, uh, I want to do this experiment, build a model. Uh, I've done some experimentation. I've got some data that I want to analyze. And in that data, I have these customer comments that I've gathered, like shopping at your store is a hassle. I rarely shop there and always forget to bring my loyalty card, um, the one that we were talking about before. So can I use that data? Well, we can. So we're going to show you how we do that. These are sort of the summary slides I'm going to come back to. So let's go back over here. Here's the demo. First of all, I want to point out that we are just simply in SQL Developer. So this is SQL Developer 4.1.3, and I am using the Oracle data mining extension right here. So that's uh, a separate uh, uh, configuration. Once you download and install SQL Developer, you just go through here and you say, I want to view, I want to view Oracle data miner. There's some connections and some configurations on how to do that. It'll take you five minutes to set it up um, and you're off and running. So what I have here is a scenario that I've already done, but I'm gonna go up here and start with a blank sheet of uh, uh, part of my workflow here. So I'm gonna go get a data source I'm going to use this data that we ship sometimes with uh, the database, and it has some data that's relevant to um, text mining kind of situations. I'm going to use this or uh, data mining data uh, text build. 
Okay, and so it's got some data that has customer comments, and uh, I can see a little bit what the, the variables are. I can move them all over or not. There they all are, and there's my data. So I just want to show what some of this data looks like, so I'm going to uh, view the data, and as you can see here, I see this affinity card is great. I think it's a hassle to remember it all the time. Um, I purchased a new computer recently. Can you ship the uh, manuals to me? And so all of these are, are customer comments in here. And what I want to do is show how easy it is to just take this data and mine it. But I don't have to exclude that data. I can just keep right on going. So I'm going to go straight to a, uh, I'll show some more complicated versions of this in a minute. I'm going to show the basic one first. I'm going to build a classification model. I'm going to connect that to that. So when I do this, it's going to say, what's my target field? It's going to be this affinity card or this loyalty card. My customer ID is going to be customer ID. Now, I have these uh, input attributes or input variables, and I have this automatic um, handling of how to uh, treat each of these variables as text or on structure, uh, 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 numerical data, categorical data, and so on. I'm going to change this. So I've turned it off. I'm going to override. So now I'm going to say, well, this is not a categorical data. Don't, don't treat those as long text strings. Instead, treat them as text. That's it. That's all I have to do. So under the hood, a lot of things are going to happen. And I, and I, want, to, I want to show you this. Um, under the hood, I'm going to tokenize all that data. I can also do themes. I'm going to pick which language. I'm going to default to English here, but I could have multiple languages here if I wanted to. So I'm going to stick back with the English. Uh, I can support stemming. Um, I have stop words okay, um, that are going to be removed automatically. Uh, I can add in my own stop list here and, and step through for different uh, uh, customizations of this if I want to go and put in my own thesaurus for like a medical literature situation or or my own terminology at, our, at an automotive use case or whatever. I can, ex I can replace the thesaurus that comes with the Oracle text with my own and I can extend it. That's not supported by the GUI, but I can read the Oracle text manual and go under the hood and change those kind of things. And now notice, whoops, notice also when I, when I go to mine this, I'm gonna set this up here so I can just kind of talk to this uh, as I go to run this. I'm gonna go run this right now and so it saves the workflow and it starts the launching of the models here. But what it's going to do is it's going to perform the uh, performance matrix. It's going to do the ROC curve. It's going to do a lift and profit curve. It's also going to automatically sample randomly a 60% sample of the input data set. And then it's going to have a holdout sample of the other 40% that it's going to use for testing purposes. And uh, once it does all that, which it, it just finished in a, in a little bit, it's going to have built a generalized linear model a support vector machine with default uh, settings, automatic settings for uh, whether it's a linear or a Gaussian model. It's going to do a decision tree, which can also handle unstructured data and a naive phase. So I'm done. If I go through here and look at any of my models, let's say like a um, support vector machine model, I can see that I have um, for the target field one, if I just sort this, um, then I see the top most relevant uh, variables here. If I say, well, I just want to see the comments. Um, so if I sort just based on comments now and say sort this, then I find that shops, Texas, um, other, these are all uh, more and customer or sort of the other direction. But these are all variables that either in a positive or negative direction affect or influence the target outcome of one. Yes, they do uh, hyper respond to this loyalty card. So that's all it really is. I'm, I'm, I'm mining the data in that fashion. If I have a, 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 another a variable, let's say a generalized linear model, it shows how that uh, works here in, in its uh, ingestion of that. And if I go through the same thing here, it's a different model. Um, so you can see how that sort of takes the coefficients for the uh, uh, comments here as well. So it's very powerful and it's very easy. So that's, that's kind of the way it works. I've gone and created one already over here. So I have my different models. I'm going to compare my, my test results over here. So I get different met metrics for predictive uh, confidence, average accuracy, and so on, and different lift charts so I can see which, which model does the best job. And it looks like the support vector machine in general does a pretty good job. Okay, so that's, that's quite interesting. Um, and I've, I've, I've done a whole flow here, which I can now take another set of data, the text apply data, and make my predictions. So at this point, it's saying make a prediction probability. Also give me the reasons why. I've also added in some additional variables to be carried forward. Um, 
just for the purposes of, uh, of showing some results here, make it a little bit more interesting. And so now here are my predictions, which I can sort the prediction probability in descending order. And here they all are now as the uh, most likely to hyper respond to the offer. And here is the prediction details. So it looks like these people are saying something about others and shops and never. And these are helping to influence my prediction that this person is, in fact, going to hyper respond. It's a 40 year old person and so on. So so that's how I can very easily data mine my structured data, my unstructured data and so on. Now, I also have uh, another scenario here, which is a scenario where I have some sales data, customer data. It's, it's the one I was showing before. I just want to show uh, a little bit more uh, busy uh, scenario here where now I can view my models. And again, I have a support vector machine uh, here. I'm going to just search for the uh, uh, comments, C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S. And again, search through this and I see the uh, uh, comments of uh, forget and sending and store. These are all sort of positive or negative uh, influencers on uh, my outcome and notice I can have a lot of comments. Okay, I can, and each of these are pieces of data that I don't necessarily want to throw away. And as I said before, my experience working with customers and noticing what, what they get for results, 10, 15, 20% perhaps model improvements when you do this. You can also do this in unstructured data, uh, excuse me, in clustering situations. So here's some clustering, it's the same data, but now we're gonna do some clustering. So I just wanna show how this works. We're using the K-means Clustering, we could use a, uh, a expectation maximization or a orthogonal partitioning clustering. And here, in each of these uh, cluster nodes, here's a four percent, eight percent of the population, and this is these are the variables that help distinguish what that uh, what that cluster is. So they say the word idea and remember and shop, but they're also from California and they're mostly divorced. But some of these words are appearing in their uh, communications and their unstructured data. And that's helping me to separate out the uh, and identify the different clusters, the different segments. So maybe they talk more about a certain political candidate. Maybe they talk more about organic foods, what, you know, whatever it is. So we don't want to leave all that sort of dark data or unstructured data unused. We want to tap into that. And with Oracle Advanced Analytics, that's quite, uh, quite easily achieved. So that's most of what I wanted to show. I just wanted to kind of recap some of this through a few um, more PowerPoints. So here we're doing the loyalty card, uh, identifying the best uh, loyalty card responders and their profiles. We're using this sort of 360 degree view of customers, which includes the unstructured data. So our, our, our uh, rules now, if it's a decision tree, uh, include the relevant, uh, the relevant, um, uh, the relevance, I guess, of each of these different terms in, uh, uh, in the customer's profile relative to how often these terms appear in the larger population. So kind of complicated concept, but it basically it's a decision tree that can now include the unstructured data as well. And the same thing applies for the clustering and the other types of uh, predictive anomaly detection and so on that we would do. Um, the uh, coefficients as I've shown before, say in the um, support vector machines are just gonna show as a positive or the red as negative influencers on the outcome. It's the same as using structured data. It's just a slightly different uh, representation, but it's very easily achieved because you just change that setting to uh, the text and everything else happens automatically under the hood. Um, here's the uh, clustering example, as I showed before. So now we have a hierarchical cluster. And again, the clusters are defined using structured data, like household size, but also the relevant, uh, the, 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 the um, prevalence of these terms relative to the larger population. So this person says uh, discount a lot, they say shop and a lot, um, and they forget. So this is a certain category of people. So maybe you wanna say, hey, reminder, don't forget to use your discount card, come in on Saturday for your big sale um, that we're having, something like that. Um, and again, the clustering viewers, they're the same. They just handle the structured data, the unstructured data all together. So that's very sort of straightforward and easy. So now, sort of wrapping up, if you want to try this out, it's very easy to get started. There's a number of different ways to get going. There are, if you send me an email at charlie.berger at oracle.com, I'll send you this list of links. Um, there are also, um, I'll post these uh, uh, power, this PowerPoint along with the YouTube video so you can get access to that. What I like are these tutorial series. And if you go click on that, 
it'll take you off to these tutorials, which are which are a number of them here. So setting up Oracle Data Miner, using the GUI, Star Scheme, which was one of the ones that we were just doing, and the other one that I was going to point out was this specific text mining one. So here's the text mining one. If I click Begin Tutorial, then it takes me off to this whole sort of thing that'll take you about 30 minutes. And if you step through this, it'll take you through how to set it up. There's your data source. So I scroll on down here, it'll tell you how to change that to text, uh, just like what we did before. And you'll scroll through the whole uh, methodology. There's your uh, uh, customer uh, comments included in a uh, cluster and so on. So it walks you through that whole process, a very simple and easy way to get started. So that's what I, that's what I like quite a bit. There are also uh, some other things that are, that are kind of interesting. There's the two-day course. We also have a great partner, uh, Vlamis, who actually hosts all this up on an Oracle cloud, and uh, they provide that uh, free to their, uh, you know, to the community. Uh, and you can go there, there's Dan Vlamis, and uh, uh, they host it all up on the cloud, and you just go up there and fill out a form, and they'll let you take it uh, for a test drive for a few days. They also provide consulting in their official Oracle University course instructor, so you can also tap into them for that if you like, but it's a very simple, easy way to just give it uh, a try and take it for a test spin. From time to time, we have, uh, I guess it's once a year, we have uh, a user group meeting. We had our last one in uh, at Oracle headquarters at the end of January, and I wanted you to mark your calendars and uh, please join us for the next one that's coming up at the end of January, January 2017, and there hopefully we can have you come in and perhaps even deliver a presentation on how you are using Oracle Advanced Analytics to mine your structured and your unstructured data. Um, this forum doesn't really allow me to take any questions, but if you do have any questions or you want to follow up, you can send me an email at charlie.berger at oracle.com. I thank you very much for your time, and thank you uh, for watching this YouTube video. Thank you.